Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and this is Shankho Shubla Rai Karmukar. I am going to upload today a new video on hydrogen chloride which belongs to study of compounds of ICAC class 10. So let's begin. In the year 1648, Gluber Shorba Prothom 8th cell gas rock salt thicke prepare karen. Pored dike, scientist Priestley in the year 1772, 8th cell prepare karen and Davy proposed the name of hydrogen chloride of the gas in the year 1810. Surprisingly, hydrogen chloride was historically called as marine acid, muriatic acid, spirits of salt. Hydrochloric acid is completely a corrosive, strong mineral acid. It's colorless, high pungent solution of HCl in water reacts with any other organic bases. Hydrogen chloride occurs in free state in our gastric juice. Now we are moving forward for the properties of hydrogen chloride. The molecular formula of hydrogen chloride is HCl that is act atom of hydrogen and act atom of chlorine combined to format the hydrogen chloride. The molecular mass of hydrogen chloride is 36.5 so we can predict the vapor density of it and it would be 18.25 that is just half of the molecular mass. As we have stated earlier hydrogen chloride is a colorless gas. The hydrogen chloride gas is not combustible but it forms in moist air. It is highly soluble in water and the freezing point of it is minus 130 degrees Celsius. The hydrogen chloride forms the covalent bond and due to the high difference of electronegativity between hydrogen and chlorine, it forms a polar compound. Hydrogen chloride gas is mainly prepared in two pathways. The first one is the direct combination and here moist hydrogen is reacted with chlorine in presence of diffused sunlight. And we can easily observe the reaction written below. But the reaction should be maintained in diffused sunlight because in presence of direct sunlight it may be explosive. But in dark condition the reaction will be very slow and the production of HCl gas will be absolutely negligible. But the popular way to prepare HCl gas is the laboratory preparation method and here we follow some steps according to the picture we can easily follow that here we have used a round bottom flux, a delivery tube, a washer bottle full of concentrated sulfuric acid and a glass container where we try to collect the HCl by the upward displacement of air. The reagents which are going to be used in the laboratory preparation of HCl is NaCl and concentrated H2SO4. Initially, the round bottom flux has been fed by some amount of NaCl and through a tube, concentrated H2SO4 is applied when the system is getting the temperature of less than 200 degree Celsius. In the system, the reaction is going to be proceed in such way NaCl plus H2SO4 equal to NaHSO4 which is known as sodium bisulfate and it is nothing but an acid salt and HCl gas is going to be prepared when the temperature is less than 200 degrees Celsius. But if the temperature is increased more than 200 degrees Celsius, then the reaction will be followed up the next step as 2 NaCl plus H2SO4 equal to Na2SO4 plus HCl. So the rate of production of HCl will be increased if the temperature is going to be more than 200 degrees Celsius. But we never try to implement the temperature of the system more than 200 degrees Celsius because it will cause several drawbacks. Firstly, the fuel will be wasted. As a result, the costing of the total process will be immensely high. Number two, the glass apparatus may be damaged as the temperature becomes high because the glass flux may be broken. And the third one, the sodium sulfate, which forms a hot crust and it cannot be removed from the glass flux. 
as a result it cannot be reused and the costing of the total process must be immensely high after preparing the hcl gas in the round bottom flux the delivery tube helps it to be propagated the hcl gas inside a washer bottle full of concentrated h2so4 where the hcl is going to be purified we know H2SO4 is a very hydroscopic element. As a result, it has the immense affinity in water. So it can easily absorb the moisture from HCl gas and make it purified. But we don't use phosphorus paint oxide or calcium oxide as a drying agent because they react with HCl. And two reactions has been listed below and we can easily observe that if we try to dry HCl gas with the help of them we will never get the HCl return. During the preparation of HCl gas the total process must be conducted very carefully and slowly. The collection of HCl gas is followed by the processes of upward displacement of air as HCl gas is heavier than that of air. We have decided earlier that HCl gas has the vapor density 18.25 which is heavier than that of air. The identification of HCl gas is very interesting. If we bring a paper initially dipped with ammonia in front of the HCl gas jar then a white fume is going to be formed and this is nothing but the ammonium chloride which is going to be suspended in air. This is the example of the reaction where two gaseous particle is going to prepare a solid one. Now to prepare hydrogen chloride we usually prefer the concentrated sulfuric acid. Why? Because the concentrated sulfuric acid has a very high boiling point that is 337 degrees Celsius. As a result during the boiling of the NaCl it is not going to be evaporated. But we don't prefer nitric acid because the nitric acid has the boiling point of 83 degrees Celsius. So during the boiling of rock salt, it may be converted into vapor and will make a mixture with the HCl gas that cannot be separated easily. We are now differentiating between the hydrogen chloride gas and hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen chloride gas cannot convert the blue litmus into red because it don't show any type of acidic nature but hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid and it can easily turn the blue litmus into red. In the other hand hydrogen chloride gas cannot conduct current electricity because only the covalent bond is present but hydrochloric acid is a very very good conductor of current electricity. Anhydrous HCl is a very poor conductor while aqueous HCl is an excellent conductor. Anhydrous HCl or hydrogen chloride contains the covalent bond. As a result, the sharing of electrons is going to be taken place and there is no presence of ion. As a result, they are unable to conduct the current electricity. But while they are going to be dissolved inside water, they form the aqueous HCl. And we know water is a very good dielectric material which has the dielectric constant of 81. As a result, it first ionized the HCl and then dissociates it. So as a result, it can able to form the H3O plus cations and Cl minus anions and it can conduct the current electricity. We have stated earlier that hydrogen chloride gas is extremely soluble in water. It has been observed that at 20 degrees Celsius, 1 cc of water can able to dissolve 477 times of its own volume of hydrogen chloride gas. That's why while we try to dissolve HCl gas inside water, we need to follow some steps. Because if we directly try to implement HCl gas inside water through a pipe, then due to the high solubility rate, a vacuum will be created and the water will be moved in the upward direction that may be accidental. That's why we follow a proper step to stop the back suction and we use a funnel like tube to dissolve the HCl gas inside water. We implement the funnel like tube structure to dissolve the HCl gas inside water 
to increase the surface area of absorption of HCl gas. As a result, a huge amount of water must be connected in the surface and that cannot be implemented in the upside because the weight of the, that particular sectional water will force them to come down. And the next one, the funnel of the delivery tube must be placed in such way that the upper surface of the water is just touches the edge of the funnel to make it sure that there is no possibilities of back suction of water. Now we are looking forward with the reactions of HCl. The aqueous solution of HCl can easily react with active metals and they form the salts and produces the hydrogen gas. As an example, if we follow that HCl dilute can easily react with calcium and forms calcium chlorides. Like if we follow the activity series, then the metals which are placed at the top of hydrogen can easily replace hydrogen from the HCl. But the elements which are placed below than hydrogen like copper is unable to replace the hydrogen that's why with copper HCl will not react. Type B HCl reacts with metal oxides and hydroxides and form the salts and water. Like copper oxide in presence of HCl prepares the cupric chloride and water. Type C HCl reacts with carbonates and bicarbonates to form salt water and carbon dioxide like sodium carbonate in presence of HCl prepares sodium chloride water and carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide is emitted as gas the aqueous solution of HCl can easily react with metal sulfides to form hydrogen sulfide which is a colorless gas having a strong odor of rotten eggs like FES can react with HCl to form FeCl2 and H2S. Type 5 Metal Sulfite and metallic bisulfites forms salts and sulfur dioxide reacting with HCl. As an example, Na2SO3 in presence of HCl prepares NaCl plus sulfur dioxide and H2O. Type 6, the aqua solution of HCl reacts with silver nitrates and lead nitrates to form silver chloride and lead chloride which is insoluble in HNO3. These are the identification reactions of HCl. Type 7, an aqua solution of HCl forms sulfur and sulfur dioxide both reacting with thiosulfate. As in reaction, we can easily observe Na2S2O3 in presence of HCl prepares NaCl, SO2 plus sulfur and water. The last part of HCl is going to be discussed over here is known as the aquaregia. Aquaregia is known as the king's water. This is the mixture of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid at a ratio of 1 is to 3. Aquaregia is the yellow orange sometimes red foams liquid and named by alchemists because it can dissolve the noble metals like gold and platinum. As we have stated earlier that the aquaregia is containing the mixture of nitric acid and the hydrochloric acid at a ratio of 1 is to 3. So in the reaction we can easily observe that three molecules of hydrochloric acid is going to react with one molecule of nitric acid to form nitrosyl chloride and nascent chlorine. And the nascent chlorine is responsible to dissolve the noble metals.